in the kitchen, and today is Chef Kevin. I'm going to be working on um, Mahi Mahi, which has another name that I started when I was cooking. It was called Dolphin, and that's the fish as opposed to the mammal. And it is also known as um, Dorado in Spanish cuisine. Uh, but we're going to first, we're going to be serving that with an apple cranberry chutney with a pepita and mustard glaze on that. But first I'm going to show you how we make the chutney and then we'll go into breaking down the fish and we'll, we'll go from there. So with the chutney I'm going to start with one bag of fresh cranberries since it is that season. We're just going to dump those into the pan. Um, I like to look at them a little bit. You want to make sure any little pieces of stem and sometimes some of them will get a little dried and wrinkled. So just look at what you're using and what you're putting into the pan. But to those cranberries, I'm going to add a half a cup of water, one quarter cup cider vinegar, a half a cup of brown sugar, one cup white sugar, one medium onion dice or just about one cup, and then two apples that are peeled, seeded, and then diced up. And then I have in here one tablespoon of cinnamon, eighth of a teaspoon of clove, and an eighth of a teaspoon of allspice. I'm gonna put all that in there. And then we're gonna add uh, roughly a cup of raisins. You could use dark raisins, light raisins, or any other dried fruit. And we're just going to put all that in. Like I said, that's about one cup of the raisins there. And we're just going to bring that to a boil, let it simmer and cook down. And the chutney is sort of a sweet and sour whole berry cranberry sauce, if you would like to think of it that way. So we'll take that, we're going to put it on the stove, and for about 20 minutes we'll let that go. In front of me I have a Mahi Mahi Dolphin O Dorado. Um, it was kindly pointed out to me by when you look at the fins on this, you can tell that this one is a male with a larger front and the way it all papers down. We got our fish in, this fish came in fresh, headless, and gutted is the way it will come in. And this could have come from Florida or out from the Pacific waters towards Hawaii. So anyway, the way we're going to start with this, I'm going to lay them on its side and on, off of the dorsal fin, you're going to want to come down on the upper side. I'm just going to cut right along until you're going to hit the backbone. Right here is where the backbone's at. Now as you're coming up around the backbone, there are little bones that come up off the side and they're called pin bones. And you gotta cut through those. And then you're just continuing back along now towards one of the rib bones. Now with mahi, 
uh, swordfish, tuna. You're going to see this darker strip that runs through here. That's called the bloodline. Uh, with your swordfish and tuna, you tend to want to cut that out so you would be splitting this fillet in half to remove that. That's going to be the part that spoils fastest, but it's also going to be the stronger fish flavored part. But what we're going to do here is there's two ways to remove these pin bones that run in through here. One way is you're going to pull them out. We have a pair of tweezers. Right in your fingers, you're going to feel where the bones are at. And you want to get a grasp. And you're going to pull them out. And you're just going to work your way down. Now the good thing is, they don't run the whole side of the fish. And I find twisting them a little bit breaks some of the flesh away and makes it a little bit easier to pull them out. And there is another way of doing this. And in this fish, is one way you can do it. Your more expensive fish, you like to try to save it as much of the product as you can. But when you get cheaper fish or less expensive, the other thing you do is what I, I've learned to call it was like a J cut. And you're just going to cut down where the pin bone is from. And again, it's also working right in along where that bloodline is. And just taking that off. Um, in commercial kitchens, where labor becomes the most expensive part of what we're doing, Oftentimes, yeah, when I lose in product, I more than save on the labor side of what that expense would be. So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to take the fish, I'm going to set this aside in one second. Now I've given myself a little bit of room to work with, and what I'm going to do is just like any other fish, um, is to work on scaling it, so I, or taking the skin off. I cut down, give myself a good piece to grab, and the nice thing with mahi is it's a pretty thick skin and I'm just cutting against the skin and working my way forward with it. And then you come down to where nice clean piece right there and it's now boneless and I'm going to take this and I'm going to just cut it down into about a six ounce portion and now what I'm going to do for the way we're going to serve this I'm going to move this fish out of the way I've cut my fish down I'm going to take a couple of portions put them in a baking pan um, I use a stainless steel pie pan you can certainly use a ceramic dish or a any type of a baking dish under that. And what I have here is Dijon mustard with about a tablespoon of garlic added. And we're gonna spread that across the top of the fillets. And you can use as much as you would like. I like Dijon, I think that acidic bite of a Dijon mustard with the cranberry and the sweet and the tart of that chutney is going to make a real nice combination blend. And then in here I have um, some pepita seeds or pumpkin seeds. I've crushed them up, mixed them with a little bit of salt and pepper. And now we're just going to coat across the top. And we're going to put those in a 350 degree convection oven or a 400 degree conventional oven. Get this stuff out of my oven. I have my chutney right here. And now what I'm going to do with this, I like the color of it, that nice bright. So we're going to put a little bit down onto the plate. And then I'm going to take that piece of fish that just came up and out of the oven. serve that right on top. Some people, some restaurants like putting a gravy or a sauce on top of the product. Uh, it depends on what you're doing with the crust of the pepita seeds. 
I'd like to keep that there where if I put the chutney on, it tends to get that a little bit softer and broken apart. But you can certainly join us in the bistro from the and in the cafe for a papita crusted mahi with an apple cranberry chutney. Enjoy and thank you. Thank you.